Formula E is back in the French capital for the fourth time. Now, as always, we could not be any more central if we tried. The River Seine is over there, the Eiffel Tower is over there, and behind me, the Musée de Armée is the centre point of our circuit. Now, we've just gone past the halfway point of the season, and there is still absolutely everything to race for. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what to watch out for this weekend in Paris. So Paris is a special race in the Formula E calendar for many reasons. It's the home race for drivers like Jean-Éric Verne, the reigning champion of course, but it's also the birthplace of Formula E because it was here that the very idea for an all-electric street racing series was scribbled onto the back of a restaurant napkin by Alejandro Agag and FIA president John Todd. Fast forward to now and that idea that was scribbled on the back of a napkin has developed into one of the fastest growing sports on the planet. We've raced here three times before with no shortage of drama thanks to a pretty tricky street circuit. But what is different this season is that the cars are faster and they're bigger. So this could be interesting. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you this, but just in case you haven't been paying attention or you've been living under some sort of rock, this season has brought with it something very rare in motorsport. Each of the seven races so far has brought with it a different winner from a different team. And interestingly enough, every winner a different nationality. So naturally, with different drivers getting the big points in every race, that has made things incredibly close in the championship. Jerome D'Ambrosio currently leads by one point after two podiums and some solid consecutive point scoring. But there is only one race win worth of points separating first and tenth in the standings. And then you factor in things like pole position and fastest lap, and that top spot gets opened up to half the Formula E grid. With the unpredictability that comes with the racing and the results, there really is everything still to play for in what is a hugely competitive championship. But can the streak continue? Could we possibly see an eight different winner here in Paris? If so, who would that likely be? Sebastian Buemi, he came pretty close in Santiago. Pascal Verlein was inches from a win in Mexico. And even Sofra Van Dorn, who's been qualifying very well, got his first podium in Rome. An eighth different winner is not out of the question. Mitch Evans and Panasonic Jaguar Racing took the win last time out, their first in Formula E. So the question is now, could this be the turning point for Jaguar's success? In their history in the championship, they've had two podiums, but have come close seven times with fourth place finishes. So if they can continue to provide the car and the strategy that they provided in Rome last time out, they could be genuine championship contenders. After his race win in Sanya, we all thought Jean-Éric Verne is back. The reigning champion is going to be pushing for his second Formula E championship. But then after scoring no points again in Rome, questions have to be asked if he can bounce back. Fortunately though for Jev, the races he has scored points in, he scored high with two podiums. And thanks to the championship being as close as it is, he still does have a chance. So let's see what he can do on his hometown streets this weekend. We've been reminded again and again this season the power of attack mode. We've seen different strategies used both to attack and defend. And on more than one occasion, attack mode use has been the difference between winning a race and coming second or lower. He's got a call for it. It's too far back. Surely there's contact. Evans is in the lead of the race. So keep an eye out during the race for who's using it and when, because when the championship is as tight as it is, attack mode strategy has never been more crucial. So that's what we're going to be looking out for, but what do you think? Who will take the win here in Paris? Whose use of attack mode has impressed you the most so far this season? And is Jeb still in with a chance to win his second Formula E championship? Let us know in the comments.